everybody, so today's video is very highly requested. I spoke in a video about my writing and whenever I've been writing, I've been writing about Anne Boleyn and my love for Anne Boleyn, so a few of you asked me for some book recommendations about her. Now if you don't know who Anne Boleyn was, she was the second wife of King Henry VIII. She was mother to Elizabeth I and she was the first of his wives to become executed. Ugh. She's a very interesting woman, I find her utterly fascinating and I love reading about her and talking about her so I thought I'd recommend you some books about her. So I'm going to recommend two non-fiction and one fiction and that way you can hopefully get the best of both worlds. If you don't fancy a non-fiction you can pick up a fiction. As usual I will leave a link for all of the books that I'm going to mention down in the description bar below. So let's get started. So the first book that I'm going to recommend to you is Anne Boleyn, A New Life of England's Tragic Queen by Joanna Denny. This, as you can see, is a shiny old library copy. That's because my non-fiction books tend to get ruined. Um, I tend to highlight them and write in them. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people like to keep their books clean. I'm really not that bothered. Now, for me, this book, although it's quite big-ish, um, this book is quite a concise. It's a very well-paced it's a very simplistically written account of Anne Boleyn's life. It's a very good biography. I have a few little niggles about it in regard to um, some biased texts, but that's just me being picky. I think if you want to learn about Anne Boleyn's life in general and just kind of really get started into just the basics, so to speak, of her life from birth to death, I think this one's a fabulous place to start. This contains lots of Thomas Wyatt's poetry and it's actually reading this book for the first time when I was like, ooh, 14-ish, that I read Thomas Wyatt's poetry, carried on reading it elsewhere and fell in love with him and he's my favourite poet now and that's thanks to this book. This book also contains lots of um, the speeches that were made during the periods and letters and things like that. So we have in here parts of Anne Boleyn's speech that she made just before she was executed, which is an essential read if you haven't read it already. It's 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 beautiful and it's very moving, it's very touching, and it really does make you reflect on what your thoughts are of Anne. I think generally it is a very good book if you want to start with Anne. You know, it's a nice, well-paced book. It's not difficult at all in language. It's very easy to understand. You can picture it in your head. Anne Boleyn as she starts to form as you read on. It's a very good introduction. So once you have read one like that one, I would then recommend you go to Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's Obsession, The Tragic Love Affair That Changed English History Forever by Elizabeth Norton. Now this is published by Anne Boleyn and has bright white pages. And if, if I show you, sorry if you don't like highlighting in books, but I do highlight in books quite a lot. Um, for me, Non-fiction is about, look at that one, um, is about learning and for me I like to learn by writing and highlighting so I'm sorry book but yeah never mind. This book for me I feel if you're wanting to learn about Anne Boleyn is utterly essential. Reason being is because this book is about Henry VIII and his obsession for Anne Boleyn and the love of Anne Boleyn that he had in order for him to go ahead and make himself supreme head of the church in England and purge his country into civil war. It is an incredible read and I think it's very important to read this before you read anything else after about in particular Anne Boleyn's fall from power. I think you have to fall in love with the idea of Anne and Henry being in love because that what that's what this book does really well. It's about Henry VIII's obsession with Anne Boleyn and then that reflects back on Anne herself. This book is not trying to be a book of Anne's life. Although it does cover all of her life, it's not trying to be that. What this book is trying to convey to you is the fact that Anne and Henry were in love. This is the proof. This is the proof that they fell in love and then they, well, Henry VIII definitely fell out of love with Anne. And Anne had to face consequences and I think if you want to learn more about Anne's fall from power read this one first and then anything else will break your heart but you'll truly learn and understand the nitty-gritty of this. For me this book is essential. And then finally the historical fiction that I'm going to recommend I think for me 
historical fiction, if done well, is brilliant and can be almost as good as non-fiction because you can still learn oodles and oodles. And this is one that I think is done very well and it is The Secret Diary of Anne Boleyn, a novel by Robin Maxwell. The plot of this actually starts with Anne Boleyn's daughter, Elizabeth I. She's just come to power, she's 25 years old, been on the throne for a few months. Her counsellors and her advisors are very unhappy with her familiarity with her master of horse Robert Dudley who's a friend from childhood, he's a married man, his father and grandfather were executed for treason and her counsellors and advisors want her to get a suitor, provide England with the next heir and Elizabeth isn't so keen and then a elderly woman spots by and says, I was with your mother when she was in the tower. Your mother gave me this diary to give to you when you were queen. Here it is. And then Elizabeth reads on and we are transported back to Anne Boleyn's time. And we read from, you know, meeting Henry, becoming a mother, becoming a queen, and of course her death. I think this book does a couple of things of well. The first being, inaccuracies. I don't think there are too many of them, which is nice. I mean, history is dramatised enough. I don't think you need to over-dramatise it. And this book, for me, doesn't really over-dramatise it too much. The other thing that I think this book does very, very well is the diary. Now, although doing a diary format in a novel is an inaccuracy in itself, because it's a diary format, you can actually kind of race ahead a bit in time and you know, skip out the, the very high, highly political bits, which might be a bit confusing. And you can really get to the nitty gritty bits. And you can also, which I love, put in thoughts and feelings. Which again, although can be inaccuracies, we can take educated guesses. So there are letters available. Um, there are other people's accounts available. And it's just common sense. So the way that you're going to feel when you know you're about to be executed, you know, you kind of know what you're going to feel then don't you and uh, we we can take educated guesses and I think that's what Robin Maxwell does very well here you can tell that they've definitely taken their time over this book and for me historical fiction wise about Anne Boleyn this is one of the great ones so I hope you enjoyed this video of book recommendations of Anne Boleyn as I said before I will leave links to all three of them down in the description bar below if you want to go and get your hands on them now I have plenty more books on Anne Boleyn, so let me know if you would like another recommendations video about her, maybe um, book recommendations about her fall from power or something like that, or if you want some book recommendations on anyone else through history, any other figure in history. Now lots of people ask me about do I focus on British history or other countries. I mainly focus on British history partly because I'm British myself and that's what I've kind of grown up learning but I am slowly getting into French history as well so any figure in history mostly British but also possibly French as well just let me know in the comments section down below so take care everybody and I shall see you soon for the next video bye